글로벌 달티 뉴스에서 오늘은 여러분들 위해서 아주 특별한 분을 모시게 됐습니다. 바로 유발루즈 대표인데요. 이분은 현재 미국 뉴욕 디지털 에셋이라는 핀테크 기업의 대표신데요. 이 회사는 전 세계 많은 글로벌 대기업들을 파트너사로 두고 있는 핀테크 회사로고요. 현재 220여 명의 직원을 이끄는 기업가시고요. 미국 시민권자인 이스라엘 분이십니다. 오늘 방송에서는 요 지난 10월 7일 이스라엘의 전쟁 소식이 나자마자 이스라엘로 곧바로 날라가 미국 뉴욕 월가의 그 핀테크 기업가 유발 루즈 대표와 영상통화를 통해서 직접 그분의 이야기를 요 생생하게 들어보실 수 있는 아주아주 아주 특별한 시간을 갖겠습니다. 여러분들 오늘 정말 특별한 이야기를 들으실 수 있습니다. 기대하셔도 좋습니다. Until I told my mother when I was in Israel that I'm coming to see her, she did not even know that I was in Israel. Um, the decision to come back home uh, was extremely emotional and uh, quick. That uh, the only person who knew that I was coming home was my older sister, uh, who helped me uh, buy the ticket to Israel. So I didn't, I didn't even, I don't think I even told people that I was coming to Israel. I just knew that I had to go back. Uh, and most of my friends and family found out that I'm in Israel only after I yeah, arrived to Israel. I was, I was in Michigan in the U.S. Um, on vacation, and I remember going to sleep on Friday night, reading the news that there were rockets being shot to Israel. And the sad thing is that as an Israeli, we've gotten used to rockets being flown to Israel. I mean, if you just think about the situation in South Korea, how people get nervous when North Korea launches missiles to the sea. We get missiles launched at us uh, all the time. So imagine that in, if North Korea did not launch it to the sea, but actually launched missiles on Seoul. Um, on a regular basis. And, and that's just a reality that Israelis have grown to be used to. So when I went to sleep, I saw, I saw the news about um, missiles being launched towards Israel. And in my head, I was like, okay, it's just the usual. You know, they will launch some missiles. We will have systems that can protect us. Hopefully nobody gets killed. We will attack some targets on their side and, you know, everything will be back to normal. Um, it is uh, five o'clock in the morning on Saturday where my phone is ringing. And it's a friend of mine who's calling me. And she would never call me at five o'clock in the morning. Um, so I pick up the phone because I thought something happened. And she says to me, is your family in Israel okay? And I thought, that's very weird. that she would call me at five o'clock. And I said, of course, why wouldn't they be weird? She says, did you see what happened? And I said, yeah, I mean, the Hamas shot some missiles at Israel. I mean, it's not, you know, maybe for an American, it seems very crazy, but for an Israeli, it's part of life. It's normal. Um, and she said, no, no, no. I know you for many years. I know that missiles is something that happens, but this is... much more than just that. And then I opened the news, um, was not something that we are used to, um, I have to say. So even though Israelis are in constant war, we're mainly used to soldiers dying. Uh, in the 90s, there were some suicide bombers that would blow up buses, but you know, since then, since I was a teenager, we're not used to this kind of stuff. And, um, You know, I just couldn't stop reading the news, um, crying, angry. I don't know. I mean, it was, but what was the hardest was being in Michigan, so far away from, you know, my, my friends and family um, that I just felt very hopeless. And um, anybody who knows me, I always said that if Israel was ever in a war, the first thing I would do is go back. Um, so pretty much all of Saturday, I was debating, um, 
how to go back. And then I, I found a flight Sunday, first thing in the morning. So I packed everything. I flew back to New York, went home, uh, grabbed uh, a bunch of clothes. And in less than an hour, I was already on the way to the airport. Uh, I flew to Amsterdam and then from Amsterdam to uh, Israel. Uh, 그렇게 긴장된 시기에 비행기를 타고 이스라엘로 귀국하는 게 쉽지 않았을 텐데요. 그것도 암스테르담을 거쳐서 이스라엘로 들어갔는데 어떤 게 가장 어려우셨나요? The hardest thing was finding a flight that had space on it. Because all the flights, all the flights were fully booked. So actually the, the biggest challenge was not getting to Israel as much as just finding a flight that had a seat available to go to Israel. 유발로즈 대표는요. 이스라엘에 들어가자마자 가족들의 안전을 확보하고 자신이 그 조국을 위해서 무엇을 도울지 찾기 시작했다고 하는데요. 우선 그 제대한 지 오래돼서 전쟁에는 참전할 수가 없었고요. 예비군들한테 기본적인 장비가 필요하다는 것과 이번 참사로 피해를 본 피해자들 중에서는 그 외상 후 스트레스 장애를 심하게 겪고 있는 어린이, 여성, 노인들의 지원이 필요하다는 것을 알게 됐다고 합니다. 그래서 그들을 도와줘야겠다는 그런 결심을 하게 됩니다. 루즈 대표는요. 곧바로 전 세계 지인들한테 기부금 요청을 그런 이메일을 보내게 됐고요. 48시간 이내 약 50만 달러 그러니까 우리 돈으로 6억 8천만 원 정도의 그런 돈을 모았고요. 그 돈으로 그 최전선에 집결한 예비군들한테 보낼 수 있는 전투 헬멧, 고글, 장갑, 무릎 보호대 등의 기본 장비를 구매를 해서요. 그것들을 지급하는 것을 시작으로 직접 트럭으로 배달하는 후방 보급 업무를 담당했습니다. 대표님 말고도 이 많은 분들이 만사를 제치고 조국을 위해서 전쟁하러 들어갔는데요. 대체 무엇이 이 이스라엘 국민들을 움직이게 하는 그렇게 움직이게 하는 원동력이라고 생각하시나요? I have a pretty bad situation that exists in Israel. So I think the reality of that is because we truly are raised and believe that this is the only place that will protect us. Um, and that's why we are at the end of the day so loyal to the country. Um, so, you know, that's, I think, I think the reason um, why, why that happens. 대표님은 현재 회사에서 막중한 책임을 지고 있는 분이시고요. 그 많은 사람들이 회사 대표나 비즈니스 리더는 그런 책임감이 있기 때문에 항상 중립적인 입장을 취해야 한다. 뭐 또는 정치적으로 행동을 해야 된다. 이렇게 말하는 사람들이 가끔 있는데요. 이번에 이렇게 위험할 수도 있는 이런 선택을 했다고 분명히 비평하는 사람들이 있을 텐데요. 이런 비평에 대해서는 어떤 답변을 하실 수 있을까요? Um, I don't think that protecting my country is taking a political stance. Protecting my country is protecting my country. And if someone thinks that that's a political stance, then I mean, I will be respectful of that opinion. But honestly, I don't really care. I will always protect my country. Um, and and I'm, I'm not going to be ashamed of it. Um, with respect to my company, it's actually a, a harder position for me because, you know, I'm, I started the company nine years ago and I have 220 people work for me and I have investors and I've made personal commitment to both my employees and my investors. And, and at the end of the day, you know, I've had some conversations with some of my investors before I flew and I told him that that's my, my intention and we had a conversation about it and I made sure that um, everything is being taken care of. I was also available in Israel um, and I was even on business calls while I was in Israel and I even talked to investors. Um, so, you know, I, I was at a point where I felt like I have people that I can trust that will cover, will cover for me while I was going. I wasn't planning on risking my life. Um, mainly because I'm not allowed to anymore. Uh, I can't serve in the army anymore. Um, so I didn't, did, I personally didn't think that the risk was too high. I know that people from not Israel would not necessarily understand that, but I didn't believe that I was risking my life. Um, and therefore, I felt comfortable doing 
지금까지 그 대표님의 말씀을 쭉 들어보면 대표님만의 그 리더십이 분명히 있으신데요. 비즈니스 세계에서든 다른 곳에서든 이 리더십에 대한 대표님만의 그 정의 또는 그 메시지를 말씀을 해 주신다면 어떤 게 있을까요? The most important thing and this is this is again something that um, so I was I was a commander in the army and the first thing that they taught us and I think not every army in the world have the same doctrine but in Israel um, commanders always run in the front they never give an order and stay in the back they always run in the front and that's why a lot of times in wars and conflicts you will see really high ranking officers die because they were in the front and the message there is if you want people to follow you you have to be in the front if you really want them to follow you you have to be in the front so for me i think that you know um this is no different um that you know a lot of people that ask me about who i am and what do i stand for i always kind of said like if my country if my friends are ever in trouble i will be the first one to be there and you know this was just an example of that um so i think that um my message is you know when it comes to business i mean i think that leading from the front is extremely important but again i do think that also um back to kind of like the last question we talked about it's important that even though you're passionate and you're leading from the front you need to understand that there are people that don't necessarily share all of your opinions and it's just i do think that again it's important to kind of understand that uh, about your people and i think that if you do that um even those that don't necessarily see eye to eye with what you do or with your beliefs can still be supportive of you. Um, so I think that leading leading by example and being empathetic to other people um, is extremely important from leaders today. 자, 여러분 오늘 디스트레셋의 유발루즈 대표와의 특별 인터뷰 어떻게 보셨나요? 유발루즈 대표께 진심으로 어, 귀한 시간 내 주셔서 감사드리고요. 그리고 이렇게 좋은 말씀 너무너무나 감사드립니다. 저는 이번 인터뷰를 통해서 삶을 바라보는 시선이 조금은 달라진 것 같은데요. 진행하는 내내 생각했던 것은 과연 나는 우리나라에 전쟁이 난다면 목숨을 바쳐서 조국을 위해서 뭔가를 할수 있을까라는 그런 질문이었습니다. 그리고 가장 중요한 질문은 휴전 국가인 대한민국 우리 국민들은 과연 전쟁이 난다면 전쟁의 준비가 되어 있느냐라는 그런 아주 무겁고 심오한 질문이었는데요. 물론 우리의 국방위 산업은 상당히 앞서간다고들 하는데요. 우리 국민들은 어떤 준비가 되어 있는지 궁금해졌습니다. 오늘 인터뷰가 여러분들께 많은 도움이 되었길 바랍니다. 